Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Greg Koberg here, and today I'm going to give a kind of general or brief overview of using Network Shell to uh, connect to some server in a remote environment. Um, so in order for me to do that, i got to first kind of draw our infrastructure here. And on one side we have you. This is you here, and you're you know happy guy. You got Blade Logic installed. You got your NSH. And over here we have some server that you want to connect to. And this could be you know really one or more server, but you want to connect to it via NSH. And um, in the middle here, the kind of in between the control mechanism is our app server server. And I'll just you know, I'll just draw like a box. Okay, this is an app server. And maybe what I'll also do is all right, I'll keep this separate. NSH proxy. It's typically in a customer environment, this is like a single server here. Um, so this is like another server here. Let's say our app server, this is used for, um, this is a, a job job server and maybe a console or a config. Okay? And I'll draw a dotted line here between this different part of the infrastructure because um, if you look at our typical architecture diagram, this is the uh, server tier, and this is the middle tier, and this is the uh, client tier, I think. I'll just put it as client. Um, it might be console. I think it's client. But this is kind of a sideways view of our typical three-tiered architecture here. And, um, you know, we have a sort of central here. Maybe I'll just draw, like, you know, our database. And then we have also like a file server, a file server DB. Not really necessary for this particular um, demo, but you know, just so you can kind of see all the components here. And over here we have two things, and one being the console, which you know again is you know config manager, the GUI, whatever you want, GUI. Right, the GUI. And then another separate component here is NSH. So I don't know if some people confuse or, you know, kind of think NSH and the console are the same thing, but it's it's two totally different things. Um, this is our command line down here. Command line. And this is our, you know, kind of graphical GUI. And as an end user, you can kind of launch one or the other independently. And you can actually, from the console, you can say launch NSH. And this is, um, you know, something you'll see as a custom command. So a custom command, and that custom command is NSH here. So when you do NSH here from the console, it launches the network shell session. And I see this cause a lot of trouble and problems with people because the window will kind of like, you know, pop open right away, but then it immediately disappears. And this is as simple as like an ACLs or, you know, configuration for the NSH proxy issue. It's a pretty simple and common issue, but can be fixed with, you know, a little bit of know-how and kind of how this environment should be set up. So we have you over here on this one end, and we have our server over here that you want to connect to via NSH. So when you, you know, say first log into the console, um, open the console, you authenticate to the application server, and, um, you can, again, independently launch Network Shell, and that can connect to the NSH proxy. Um, one thing you can optionally do is, so let's say you don't have an NSH proxy environment. Let's say that this, this for now, just, um, you know, doesn't exist. So I'll just uh, um, I'll cross it out. Maybe I'll just um, yeah, draw a separate line here. For now, this, this doesn't exist. Pretend you don't see the NSH proxy here. And you have um, an environment where you can NSH directly to some server here. I mean, this is server server A, and you say like you know CB to server A. And as long as the actual on here are set up correctly, meaning on the export, if this is not limiting connection to a specific host, so this is like maybe app server like AS. So if this just contains like a star star, and maybe just for now, read only. Maybe I'm, allow I'm allowing connections from anywhere, whether you're the app server or some console, computer over here. I don't care who you are. Um, this is going to be an allowed connection, right? So, because this is a star right here. Let's say this is, um, this is console 
or you know, I'm coming from so this itself here is like one machine. One machine. Maybe I'll use a different color here. This is going to be a little bit messy. I'll use blue. And this is one machine here where the user is logged in. And this is, you know, con. Yeah. I'll just call it con for short. And this is where we're launching the console, launching network shell. And if this is a star, that's okay. But um, let's say now um, we change our export style. Maybe I need to do kind of like a delete here. Let's change this. Instead of using star ILO, in a typical customer environment um, or you know, secured environment, you'll some, see something like this. Like, you know, AS, meaning, you know, AS, you know, one. Um, and then maybe this is NSH proxy, say, NT1. And this is AS1. So you'll see AS1 and then um, NT1 and then RO. And what this means is that only allow connections from this particular server. I'm going to pick another color here. So eh, I don't want to use red. Green is a better color for a connection. Okay, so only allow connections from this machine and only allow connection from this machine here. And if this is the case in the exports file, if somebody launches Network Shell over here, then this is not going to be allowed because this is server con. If we wanted this to, to actually work, we would have to do something like this in our exports file. We'd have to have con and then app server one, mt one. These, these can be in any order here within our within our exports file here. So in order for that to work, if we did con um, in our exports file, then then that would work. But that's not really a recommended approach. The recommended approach is to force all the traffic to go through um, our proxy server. So this is actually a good thing. We don't want people making kind of direct direct connections to our servers here. What we want people to do is to, when they launch Network Shell, to go through the NSH proxy and then have the NSH proxy route that traffic to the target here. And so what we would do here is then remove this from our export file so we no longer need this here. And we're back to our kind of standard, typical, you know, I'll only allow connections from App Server 1 on our uh, NSH proxy one and make them read only because we're going to let the users and users that local files figure out the individual user mapping for whoever is making this connection over here. This, this, this person over here. So um, to talk about what happens when you're in the console and you say NSH here to some server and why it kind of closes. So the first reason could be this: you you say NSH here to say server A, right? And what happens is is typically the exports file are limiting connections from, you know, AS1 and NP1 and making them read only. So when you launch the console into NSH here, it's going to immediately try to CD to, um, to A, just like what we see here, right? So that's all it's doing when you launch that. And it's going to try to do that, and it's basically going down this particular route here. It's going to just try to CD to this over here, and A is going to look at its export file and say, hey, is this a trusted connection in the export file? And I say, no, I don't trust that connection. So I'm going to go back here, and I'm going to give you the typical no authorization to access host, and this window is going to close. So um, in order for this to not close, we then have to configure Network Shell on our machine to say, if, if you launch a shell, Network Shell, route all this traffic through the NSH proxy. This is the best way to do it. We don't want to go over to our export file and just start adding, you know, all the different consoles that people can be connecting to because doing that direct connection is, is not really a, you know, totally secure method for uh, allowing changes or access to some, you know, controlled server in our environment, especially if it's a production server. So, again, best practice is configure all of our clients, our network show um, clients here to route all their traffic you know, always go through the NSH proxy. The NSH proxy can then handle the are you authorized or are you authenticated. And then, um, ideally, the NSH proxy then takes that connection, um, sends it to the target over here, and the export file is like, yep, you're coming from the NSH proxy, and that's cool. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, so this is actually true whether you're launching a network shell from the console or launching it by just you know, going to the start or, you know, run and put in NSH. 
uh, however you want to launch interface with a bunch of different ways. So, um, so yeah, that's that's again kind of the common. Why does my NSH window open and close when I do the NSH here? Custom commands uh, in my environment, and, and also this is just a real you know general best practice for configuring uh, your environment in a very secure manner. So uh, again, if you have any questions, my name is Greg Coburg. Feel free to reach out, and uh, yeah, thank you very much.